Hello and welcome back to Wall Street Training's Advanced Financial Modeling course, Building the Core Model. We have already thus far completed the income statement, the five-year projection model, except for interest expense as well as interest income and our diluted shares outstanding number. Let us now turn our attention to the balance sheet. Please hit control page down to get to the balance sheet. And what I would like you to do is to fill in the following numbers. What we will do is we will calculate the totals, subtotals for our total current assets. We will then input our long-term assets as well as take the total for our total assets. We will then update and input our current liabilities numbers, take the totals down below, long-term liabilities, liability totals, as well as then our shareholders' equity numbers. So, therefore, please make sure that you have the 10K balance sheet open and ready to go. Well, again, what I would do is, let me zoom in so we can see these numbers a little bit clearer. And now, let's get What started. I would like to do is take a very quick sidebar and talk about our accounting ratios. Now, this is a very quick, short, brief review of the accounting and financial statements calculating our day's outstanding ratios. So what I would do is the following. Let's take a quick look at this. Remember that we had an item called inventory turnover ratio. Inventory turnover ratio was calculated as COGS over inventory. If this equals 10, that means Walmart turns over the inventory 10 times a year or whatever their projection period is. This means it takes Walmart or rather, this means Walmart will sell 10 shirts in that same rack, in that same store, in that same display in a year. Taking 365 divided by that 10 means it takes Walmart 36 and a half days to sell that shirt. That means days inventory outstanding, the amount of days it's sitting on their shelves trying to be sold. That formula, if you recall, is calculated as the inventory balance. Your inventory balance times 365 to get to the full year, or 90, 91, or 92 days as appropriate if you're building a quarterly model, divided by your COGS, cost of goods sold. This is the formula you will use to calculate your day's inventory outstanding. And of course, as we note here, or as we note in our accounting and financial statements integration module, anytime you mix a balance sheet and income statement ratio, you must use the average balance sheet because the average balance sheet is a point in time, the ending period. So therefore, to make it a little bit more comparable to, for the smoothing effect, you will use average balance on the balance sheet ratio number. However, for purposes of this training module, we would just simply use the ending balance for two reasons. Number one, so that we don't have to input the 2003 balance sheet. That would be just another pain. And also because we're flat out lazy. So that's okay. We'll be lazy and we'll input it. But just please note to yourself when you're building this model for real, you do not want to be lazy. You do want to input the last, uh, the third year of balance sheet historically and you want to therefore use your average balance sheet number. Similarly, for your accounts receivable turnover, rather let's just go straight to your days receivable outstanding amount. This is the number of days it takes you to collect your sales, any credit sales. That will simply be your uh, sorry, accounts receivable balance times 365 divided by your sales. And last but not least, you also want to have your days payable outstanding. And as you refer back to our accounting module, here the formula that we want to use for days payable outstanding is simply going to be your accounts payable balance times 365 that whole thing divided by COGS plus SGNA because we want to grab total operating expenses. And being really precise, you should actually exclude VNA, which we won't do here. But the idea is that your accounts payable balance is not just purely trade payables. It also includes several other items, accrued expenses, accrued liabilities, wages payable, etc. And therefore, if it wasn't broken out separately on the liability section of the balance sheet, you'll want to include your SGNA operating expenses as well. It is these ratios that we will now use. Recall, in the income statement, we use growth rates and margins. We will use these ratios to calculate most of our balance sheet numbers going forward in the future. So now, let's turn back to our Excel, and what we will do first is grab in the appropriate income statement numbers, sales, COGS, and SGNA. Let's grab those numbers in, and then we will use those numbers to calculate our ratios. And while we do that, I will also show you a nifty set of shortcut keys.